Today I'll be walking you through how our software delivery demo is built. So uh, to get started, you notice, you know, you're probably familiar with how we showcase our builds, our deploy options, uh, being able to do approvals and deploying to prod. And uh, the way we do this and the way you kind of construct this is first and foremost, create your first project. I think, and, and, and make sure that you have all the right components set up. So make sure you have your, uh, your delegates um, configured, your connectors configured, your secrets configured. Make sure all the foundational pieces are there before you get started with, you know, pipeline building. That actually, the, most of the time, it's, the time is spent to just getting the access to these things. Once you kind of figure out your access and how to set up certain resources, Building a pipeline is relatively easy. So if you go into our software delivery demo and you click on edit, we actually do a fair amount of things here. We actually do a build, then we deploy to dev, we deploy to QA, we have an approval, and we, we deploy to prod. So what's going on in this build stage, right? So in this build stage, you'll notice at configuration time, we're cloning a code base. and we clone a, a source repository. Um, we're setting up when the pod spins up some shared file paths. We are doing cache intelligence, which is a new capability, which helps us uh, cache common dependencies and improve our build time. In the infrastructure section, you'll define where this build is run. So today, Harness hosts can host your builds if you'd like. You can have it uh, build on your own Kubernetes cluster. Um, that's what we actually do in house. We we run it on our own Kubernetes cluster. Um, you can, if you don't have Kubernetes, we can run on your local kind of Docker environment. Or if you're using VMs, you can uh, run your builds on virtual machines. And then for the execution, this is how your builds are taking place. So you know, we'll we'll clone the repository. We can run some scans. We will build the Gradle app. Um, we can run our test intelligence capability so that um, we can run tests on the, 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 the application code. We can scan it. We can build and publish it to a repo like Docker or Artifactory. Image scan it with Aqua or JFrog X-Ray. And then, you know, we can get uh, the status of the sonar cube, the aqua, if you're uh, updating your PR and Git, essentially. So you service that up in your pipeline execution. Um, and, and then in the advanced, what you'll notice uh, is we have a variety of capabilities. Like you can scope all those tasks to run on a specific runner. We have the ability to uh, specify how these steps or stages are run. So you might wanna skip a stage or based off a condition, or you might want to um, only run it if something else happens. You can run steps and stages in parallel with our looping and matrix uh, uh, capabilities. You can repeat a stage if you so choose. Uh, and that kind of gives you the, a lot of flexibility in how you want to uh, run these uh, pipelines and, and stages in particular. And you'll notice this icon on the top, and these are conditional executions. This means that um, when we do a conditional execution, um, it evaluates on a specific criteria, and if it evaluates to uh, true, it'll uh, it'll skip the the step essentially. Um, and once you build the artifact, what will happen is in the deploy stage, we'll take we'll take that artifact and we will uh, associate it with your service and go deploy. And so how you could do that is this uh, will build the boutique artifact. And what it will do is it will actually um, collect the latest tag from, from your build, and then it will go ahead and progress forward with deployment where you'll specify in your service what you're deploying. So in your service, you'll have, you know, your Kubernetes manifests, you'll have, um, you know, your front end, uh, your Kubernetes manifest defined for your front end. We'll fetch it from GitHub. So you can see here, we can fetch it from a Git connector, GitLab, Bitbucket, Azure, wherever. And then um, we'll fetch the tag that you just built 
and then go ahead and um, deploy it in this given environment that you define here. And in your environment, that's where you're going to deploy. This is telling Harness how, where in what cluster it, where where this uh, environment will uh, uh, be hosted and where is this application going to be deployed into this particular environment. So you'll say, okay, I'm going to deploy into dev. Here's the actual infrastructure. So this is the actual Kubernetes cluster and namespace that this service will get deployed to. And then once that is done, you'll be able to define, uh, you know, your execution essentially. And you see here, we uh, support like a variety of steps. Like we can do infrastructure provisioning. You might have to provision, you know, um, some S3 bucket or, you know, uh, some uh, other Kubernetes resources before um, actually going through with our rolling deployment step. And, and these are all like out of the box steps. Like Harness gives you these capabilities. You just need to kind of figure out which ones best suit your needs. And if you look at the add step, we give you a massive step palette of steps to pick from and uh, leverage in your, uh, in, in your execution here. Uh, the other key, uh, pieces um, that you'll notice here is that we have the approval stage, right? And so what someone might do is they deploy to dev and then they'll deploy to QA and they either will deploy the same service that they deployed in dev or if they're rebuilding or retagging, they'll deploy a, the, a different service in uh, QA. We give you the ability to propagate. So if in the use case of deploying the same service, you would just say propagate from the first server, the first stage. Then you would say, okay, I'm propagating to QA. So I'm taking that same service, deploying it to QA. Here's the QA environment. Here's the QA infrastructure. And then you'll notice here that in QA, we have different set of steps like updating JIRA, doing a blue-green deployment, running some tests, um, swapping uh, primary and stage. Then we might run some chaos experiments to validate it. And then, you know, you might run some auto-stopping rule to uh, uh, power down the previous infrastructure in order to save some money. And then you'd update the JIRA after the execution's done. And you, as you can see here, you can define things in uh, parallel or sequential. And on top of that, we have dedicated stages for like approval to make sure that you can gatekeep. We offer JIRA approvals, ServiceNow approvals, and then um, you'll notice in here, like we have the harness approval, which is via UI or some custom job to um, evaluate. And then lastly, we have the deploy to production, which is you know your last stage where you'll take your service that you, you built You'll um, pick the environment, which is prod, and deploy to the prod Kubernetes cluster. And then in your execution, you'll have you know uh, certain steps. So in this case, we have a policy check step. This lets you um, run a policy on uh, you know a service that you're uh, uh, about to deploy or any outputs from the previous stages. Um, and then you can run your uh, JIRA uh, update step to update the JIRA that we're about to deploy to prod. And then you can see here we're doing a canary deployment in production um, and running some checks before doing the full rollout of the service. The other thing you'll notice is um, what's in the rollbacks. So every stage has a rollback section um, besides the custom stage and the approval stage. Uh, this lets you, and the CI stage. Um, so what this lets you do is you can run um, your uh, rollback workloads. Like let's say a deployment failed. It'll delete the canary first. If there's no canary, nothing will happen. And it'll progress forward to the rolling roll rollback. And then it'll update the JIRA to let you know that this ticket was, or this feature was rolled back. And then you destroy the, the infrastructure you created in the, in the stage essentially. The other key piece of, piece of capability that we offer are like input sets, uh, triggers, and um, the ability to um, templatize uh, these capabilities via our um, our templates offering. Oops, uh, what's the uh, templates? And you'll see in templates. Uh, 
the various uh, kind of templates you can create. And these templates are building blocks that can be reused across the platform. So that you could do one for a run step. This one's for a deploy stage. We offer various types and uh, you can view our documentation to kind of see what best fits your needs. Um, and you'll see like um, in each of these, you'll have the ability to customize to your light. So like if you look at this one, this is like an end to end template. You have the different, ver you can version it. So there's a stable version and there's a newer version. You can bump up the newer version and link it in your pipeline and use it as a uh, template and a resource. You can do it for anything like the CI stage, the STS stage, anything in our platform can be made a template and be shared to our uh, to your other users essentially. So templates are the best way to quickly get started with reusable components. You define it once and just reuse, reuse, reuse. So you don't have you you don't have to repeat yourself essentially. You build you you define it once, you leverage it. And so that's um, uh, how uh, these kind of pieces work. Um, if you're looking at how like a service is defined, um, what you'll notice is uh, we offer various deployment types in the platform. So you can do Kubernetes, Native Helm, you know, SSH, Lambda, et cetera. And if you do like Kubernetes, for example, um, you can add your manifest and we offer different types. And then it, within our types, you can see, you know, where you want to fetch these manifests. Um, same with artifact source, we can fetch your images from ECR and template them in into your uh, your manifests. So via Go templating, we can actually um, define a tag and actually reference it, or you can take it at, from the build stage, and it'll just automatically fetch the tag that was built and published. And so this is um, how we recommend users get started uh, and kind of start building. You build, you get the connectors, the secrets, the 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 services, environments all built out first. So you know like the what, the where, and and then the some of the pieces to the how, and then you start building your pipeline with the pipeline studio. And you can uh, build them from the UI first or you can use uh, from a Git repository, um, or if you truly want to start, if you can always use a template as well. And if, if you have any more questions, you know, feel free to go to our docs at developer hub uh, at Harness, and you will see plenty of examples uh, to kind of get started and set up a pipeline. Thank you.